हेलो यस सर एम आई ऑडिबल स्पीकिंग सर यस सर ओके फाइन ऑडिबल टुडे विल सी सम ऑफ द न्यू पैसिव कंपोनेंट्स द लास्ट क्लास we have started the passive devices and uh, we talked about the termination and variable shorts correct and uh, today we'll see uh, the attenuators correct we'll see the attenuator and uh, we'll find it out some of uh, the math mathematical aspects as well so let us begin this thing so the very first thing is that just a minute attenuator so so attenuator provides a fixed or variable attenuation along the path of the incoming signal okay so this is the first thing and in many places we are using this things at inverter actually so that we can control the amplitude of the signal okay some time this is the requirement actually now the simple uh, type of the attenuator consists of thin tapered resistive card okay very thin tapered resistive card in the wave guide through a slot we are putting this things okay which is like we have seen in the last class of the in in case of the match load okay so the first point is that we are using that here the thin tapered resistive card now there is two terms one is the tapered and another is the resistive card is there so tapering it means means gradual change in a input impedance okay smooth transition is there and the resistive card itself providing you some of the absorbability so both both the combination of both actually providing the excellent attenuation fine so how you control uh, the attenuation so the attenuation level controlled by the changing of the depth of penetration inside wave guide okay and there are other different kind of attenuator as well okay uh, which utilize actually uh, an adjustable length of wave guide which operates below its cutoff frequency operates below its cutoff frequency uh, i believe you remember these things like in a wave guide it's the things you have seen that above the cutoff propagation is started actually means you can expect the propagation and below the cutoff there is a attenuation correct so these property could be utilized as a attenuator fine and there are certain disadvantages also okay so the particularly the output is attenuated by the reducing of the coupling between input and output guides and not by the absorption of the incident wave fine and uh, another thing is that uh, there is a high degree of attenuation corresponds to a reflection coefficient near unity which is sometimes not required actually so rotatory attenuators okay you can see a picture here also the rotatory attenuator is more satisfactory precision attenuator okay so we'll be talking about uh, these things fine 
okay so like here you can see a picture actually hmm. so i think i should remove some of the things just a minute okay so let us talk about over these things so this is what this is actually rotatory attenuator okay so this is a very simple diagram actually i try to explain this things okay so okay this is actually you will see also in a lab correct so here this is the construction basic construction of the this is the basic construction of the rotatory uh, attenuator so here you can see there are resistive cards are there correct this is the resistive cards okay and you can see between the two uh, double lines okay so there is a rotating section of the circular wave guide fine so we can rotate like that fine so i can write some of the key points here so it consists of consist to rectangular to circular wave guide tapered transition okay <coughs> tapered transitions fine so here you can see this is a purely a circular uh, this this uh, in between these two resistive cards okay so here you can expect a transition from rectangular wave guide to like here you can see this is up, up to here we have a perfect rectangular wave guide and up uh, after this okay there is a smooth transition is there so it is going to connect actually properly with the circular guide fine so this transition is needed because here there is a different mode here there is a different mode correct fine and the second point is here that with an intermediate section of the circular wave guide okay which is which is actually free to rotate this particular part is free to rotate fine so as i told you there is a card actually here so the resistive cards are placed in uh, both input side and output transition sections and oriented actually parallel to the broad wall of the wave guide okay and the similar resistive card is also placed at the center of the circular guide fine so what happens actually what happens the incoming uh, means like the wave will be going inside from let's say this side okay so the incoming mode is t10 mode correct Uh, after cut off we will be having this things okay so the incoming mode is t10 mode in a rectangular guide and it is going to transform to te11 this is the mode of the circular guide okay so here with this transition there is a negligible reflection due to the tapering transition because there is a gradual change in uh impedances fine and the third point is the resistive card in the center this one can be rotated rotated actually and its rota rotation relative to the electric field of incoming t11 mode can be varied so that the amount of attenuation could be adjusted Fine. Well, let's say if you want 10 dB, 15 dB, like that. Okay. So by the rotation, you can do the things. Now there is a one more thing. Like here, as I told you, that you can see in a rectangular wave guide, this is actually placed resistive card placed along the plane. Why? If you try to find it out the surface current, this is n cross h, and if you try to get the direction, this is along the plane, and the surface current is. Uh, almost tangential to this resistive card and hence we may expect actually the maximum level of attenuation so this is the actually uh, the point here fine 
now let us little bit explore explore these things further here so here you can see this is the thing now let us talk about the center resistive card okay center resistive card fine so what we have seen quickly can you can you see this thing so here this play is actually this is a center resistive card and this is actually oriented at some angle let's say theta okay to the direction of the electric field polarization t e 1 1 mode fine fine now let us try to understand this right okay so particularly this resistive card okay you can see this black one uh, thick black line is a resistive card correct and it is oriented at some angle okay and this angle is let's say theta fine this angle is theta and this is relative to the direction of electric field okay which is going to get from t11 mode okay huh? so this is the e direction okay so the first point is that the x polarized t11 mode i can write the x the x polarized t e 1 1 mode may be decomposed into two t 1 1 mode along with u and v directions okay so uh, to simplify the problem actually uh, intentionally intentionally we did these things what we did this is the original figure which is a sent in a circular wave pipe correct so what we did actually we decompose actually uh, we decompose like this is the original x and y axis you can see here now we decompose like that u and v can you see this thing u and v fine so here what you can see this particular if i talk about so this is e field parallel to two extreme cases actually i can uh, uh, you can take like this thing and in between we may expect the things okay so to slab and this is what this is e fields okay this is the direction of e field and here you can see this, these lines actually are the e field okay these lines are e field so that is why i am saying, saying this thing e fields are parallel to the slab okay and here the e fields are perpendicular to slab i believe you can see these things okay so what will happen actually when when as i told you this e fields sorry just a minute so when this e fields are parallel to means tangential over these things okay so it is going to be absorbed okay i should write actually just a minute so this particular thing this particular thing will absorb okay the fields will be going to absorb and here because this is a perpendicular or normal so there is a chances of transmission so this is the case where the wave is going to be transmitted correct huh. so this is the actually idea you need to little bit play about okay or you need to recall the e field or h field component for the t one one mode and hence you can see the things over the boundary condition you can compute so many things also so what we can say actually here there would be uh, uh, there would be uh, some attenuation due to the resistive card present in output transition of the attenuator and particularly if you talk about the objective here is to find it out the dependence of attenuation on the rotation angle correct because 
we want we means like fixed type of attenuator we may get we can develop but what happens when we require the uh, variable attenuator so here uh, this uh, rotation based this things could be understand like that okay now the thing is if i recall the e field here correct if i recall the e field so uh, the dependence of uh, the attenuation like i told you this is going to be absorbed and some one time this is a, a perpendicular so what we have seen actually we can conclude that like it is it is directly proportional to the rotational angle correct which is a theta okay now we can develop some of the analytical relations okay some closed form form and by which we can claim some of the things okay we can claim some of the things so for that what we need to do okay we need to recall the e field component okay for t one one mode now what we assume here that e fields are polarized in a x direction correct so this is one assumption here ah, so kya man rahe for polarization in the x direction so the e field will be given to here as oh just a moment so the e field will be e field will be this things bessel function is that i believe you remember this thing p 1 1 dash you have to recall uh, the field components of the circular guide correct upon r a r cap cos phi minus p p dash sorry p dash 1 1 a j 1 okay this is another kind of bezel function then p 1 1 dash r over a this equation we already no, actually, from our previous background, what we studied in a electromagnetic course. Ah, so I just recall this thing. No need to derivation sign. Right. Correct. So this is the E field, complete E field in a five in a, in a air cap direction and in a E phi direction. Fine. Now this is the complete field. Okay. This is the this is the complete field. Now we need to decompose okay how we can do actually so a little bit trigonometry we need to recall here so what we can write cos phi cos phi we may write cos okay phi and we'll add here plus theta minus theta okay purposefully okay because we need to we need to bring theta into the system correct is equal to we can write cos phi minus theta cos theta minus sine phi minus theta sine theta and sine phi could be written like sine phi minus theta plus theta so this will be sine phi minus theta cos theta plus cos phi minus theta and sin theta so this thing means we know okay these things so we can utilize this and the previous expression that electric field wala thing we can decompose in a u and v direction as i told you okay so these are the virtual uh, these things uh, excess u and v purposefully we added here to understand the parallel and normal conditions correct so the e field component could be written the complete e field component will be vector e is equal cos theta j1 p11 r by a divided by r a r cap cos phi minus theta minus p11 one one dash r over a is the radius of 
uh, the guide. I hope you will remember these things, the basal function and all. And uh, please check actually, okay, these things. It's not very um, hard to understand. You already done these things. I'm just rearranging here. Nothing very great things I'm doing here. I'm just rearranging all those things. Minus sine theta j1 p11 dash r a divided by r ar cap sine phi minus theta plus p11 dash over a j1 dash another kind of basal function p11 dash r over a e phi cap into cos phi minus theta fine so now what we did actually having this exercise will, will provide you okay um, the option particularly here like here you can see you have the ar cap also e phi cap here ar cap and e phi cap means like if you see this first term this is actually u axis Okay, and this is what this is going to absorb. This is going to absorb. Fine, and this second term is actually the V axis. And this is what this is going to transmit it. So, like we can, we have the full control. Ah, we have the full control from these equation. We can see that how much rotation will provide you. We can estimate from here how much rotation will provide the absorption and how much rotation will provide you the transmission. Okay. So, this is one thing. Okay. Now, Let's assume, let's assume that the resistive card in the output section parallel to the y axis okay then what will happen then the component of the electric field polarized along the x axis would be only be transmitted are you getting this thing let's say we if we are assuming that resistive card in the output section is parallel to the y axis then what will happen then then the component of the electric field which is going to the la this uh, last section okay and this electric field polarized along the x axis would be only the the things is going to transmit it correct so what we can say actually from the previous equation immediately we can write the e field is equal to minus sine theta j1 e11 dash r a divided by r a r cap sine y minus theta plus p p11 dash r over a j1 these things and a5 cap cos y minus theta okay Fine. Now, what we can do actually, little bit uh, we do, we can, we may uh, expand this thing, and we can originally get back uh, the field component along the x and y direction. How? So, if you expand this things, and when you're expanding and writing this thing, I'm skipping one or two terms here, writing the final form. So this is sine square theta j1. P11 dash R over A 
divided by r e r cap cos phi minus e one one dash a j one dash e one one dash r over a a phi sine phi sine phi. Okay, so this is what this is one component. Another component is sine theta, cos theta, and almost the same term except except some different things here. E one one dash r over a over r a r cap sine phi plus p one one dash over a j one dash p one one dash r over a j phi cos phi. Okay, so if I if I say something over this thing, so this particular first component is polarized along x axis, x direction. Better to say x direction, and the second term, this term, is polarized along y direction. Okay, fine. Now, what we can conclude actually? Okay, what we can conclude? So, as I shown these things, like I uh, can show you that picture actually. So, this picture. Okay. So here you can see these things that uh, E field. Okay. Once this is parallel to the slab. Okay, and this is normal to the slab. Now, what we did actually. We decompose the electric field component in x and y direction. Correct, x and y direction. So, what we can say, the transmitted field at the output output section would be the first term. <coughs> what we just uh, what we just solve this term. Okay, so this is polarized in x direction. So. The transmitted electric field at the output transition section would be the first term, which is E is equal minus sine square theta. J one fine. So this is what this is actually. This is the field of T E one one mode. Okay, so this shows that the transmitted field is reduced by by the factor of what sine square theta from the amplitude of the incident wave. Means, like if you talk about just a minute, if you see this field only inside the brackets, okay. So you can you can easily say this is what this is the field of T one one mode originally what we started actually correct now the extra term is here sine square theta so what is the conclusion the conclusion is that the transmitted field is reduced okay is reduced by a factor of sine square theta from the amplitude of the incident wave hence what we can claim that attenuation produced Okay, is calculated like this. So I should write attenuation produced 
alpha is equal minus 20 log sine square theta. So what is that? This is minus 40 log sine theta. Um, you have a formula here. Okay, you have a formula here. Now the rotation angle is going to cover, it's going to govern, sorry, is going to govern your uh, alpha, which is what? Which is attenuation, correct? This is what? This is attenuation. So this is one of the very important property. Like in some of the application, you require 5 dB attenuation, 10 dB, 15 dB, like that. Now you know how much rotation you have to make, how, 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 what will be the theta actually. And at what theta you will be getting the 5 dB, 10 dB or like that or smooth, uh, any other value, arbitrary value you can manage. Okay. So this is one thing like in lab or in lab, you will see this kind of things as well as you will also see the fixed type of attenuation, which is actually based on the tapered resistive card only, correct? And uh, uh, this is going to absorb a particular or attenuate certain amount of the incoming wave. Fine. So this is all about uh, the attenuators, particularly we discussed here, the rotatory attenuator. Correct. Now, uh, I would like to start here uh, the electronically controlled attenuator. This is uh, the highly demand, demand uh, demanding nowadays because this, it is not like the mechanically we do all the things all time. In some, some application like the experiment uh, may be uh, performed going to perform in a remote location where other humans or these things, uh, it is some uh, uh, not favoring uh, condition there. So human can't go there uh, regularly. So the thing is how we can control electronically, we can put a command here and, and according to that, uh, the things could be adjusted. Fine. So for that actually electronically controlled attenuator would be the best option. Correct. So. Okay, so this is actually what this is electronically controlled attenuator. Ah, look like this. Okay, this is an internal circuit and all. Okay, so the very famous companies are there, many circuit they are doing these things. Ah, wide band. Uh, attenuator and all the things correct so we can control the attenuation fine now particularly for electronically controlled attenuators uh, the attenuation can be controlled by the application of a suitable signal uh, such as uh, like what you are doing in an amplifier like dc bias or you uh, know this uh, bias current mm. So, because the thing is, uh, here the some of the devices uh, like such as pin diode and FETs can be used like a variable registers, fine. And whose resistance can be controlled by the applied of signal. Okay, so this is the idea actually. Uh, so I'm again repeating, like for some devices with some devices like pin diode and FETs can be used like a variable registers and the resistance can be controlled by the applied signal. Fine. So there are two basic, uh, these things are there, like uh, you might be knowing this thing, uh, the configuration, one is a T and other is delta, correct. So like if I draw this thing, so this will be, okay, so T shape, this is R1, R2, oh, sorry, this is R2 and this is R1. And this is a characteristic impedance, let's say ZC. And this is a source. Okay. And at the last, we connected again ZC. Okay, so this is should be fully matched actually. So VG. Another configuration is that we have the delta form, this one. So this is R2, this is R1, this is R1, and the same, ZC, ZC, and source of 
so this is two basic attenuator networks and here the resistance r1 and r2 are chosen in such a way that input is matched when output is terminated into the characteristic impedance okay so for the t network what we can write r in we can write down r in will be r1 plus r2 r1 plus zc over r1 plus r2 plus zc i hope you can manage this thing r in fine ah this is not a big task for the t network actually if you see so this arm and this arm is going to parallel and it is series with this so this formula is written based on that thing correct now for r in is equal to zc correct then what we can write actually we can write actually r1 r1 plus 2 r2 is equal to zc square this is one thing now finally what we can do actually we can find it out the with heaven in here ha uh, circuit theory we need to do circuit theory we need to involve here okay and i'm doing for the t network and the pi network could be managed in the same way correct so here if you try to find out the with heaven in this is r2 over r1 plus r2 plus zc this is vg okay what is that this is a voltage across r2 when r in is equal to zc i'm again repeating this is voltage again across r2 okay when z in is equal to zc so what is the power delivered yes we can find it out the power delivered will be half of vth square over 2 zc that's all correct so it means that if i write down the whole formula this is r2 R one, R two plus Z C, V G over eight, Z C. This is mod. Okay. So it means that what is that? The available power is V G square upon eight Z C. Fine. And the power attenuation is we can say this is a K square. What is K square? K square this term. This is square. This is we are saying this is a K square. So now we have the control. Okay, this is what this is the power available power. This one is a available power, and this is the K square is the power attenuation. We are going to control with this term. Okay, K square is equal R two over R one plus R two Z C to the whole square. Okay, and pin diode in a forward bias state can be used for the Controlling the resistance R one and R two. Fine. So in this way, the attenuation could be managed. Means here R one is we can say one minus k over one plus k. Let's see, and R two is two k over one minus k square. Let's see. So this is going to be controlled by the pin diode. Fine. Okay, so in this way, uh, electronically you can control the things actually. So the circuit and all the things uh, you can see these things, and but this is the basic idea how can control the.